As the prophet of esports, I rely on trustworthy and meaningful data every day. Data from a research partner, YouGov, offers the most complete view of esports fans and gamers in the world, providing context to who they are, what they think, the brands they buy, and things they do. YouGov's connected insights and research services inform strategy at every level. If you're a team, a brand, agency, or rights holder, you should be talking with YouGov. Their partners measure and maximize ROI and are telling compelling stories with data. Visit yougov.com slash gaming dash esports to learn more. Call it new esports. And I think Ooh, one, of the big, esports. one of the big themes that has come back on the podcast and the live stream pretty repeatedly is chess's sort of rise as an esport. Um, this is why this headline caught my attention. This is another good story. It's why poker's emergence as a major esport is imminent. And, and let me just read some of the first paragraph here. It says, when we think of the biggest esports games today, poker and sports games hardly come to mind. Uh, the biggest titles in competitive gaming were, you know, CSGO, League of Legends, Fortnite, Dota, FIFA, etc. Um, there's no mention of poker. Now, in this context, William, of chess being considered one of the biggest esports in the world right now, right? Where streaming is massively popular where you know the tournaments online are getting huge audiences why has poker not emerged in the same way a and b do you buy this headline that at some point in the near future we're going to start calling poker an esport yeah i i well i mean this is where the moniker of esport is a bit tricky, right? Because I've long said, and I'm quite happy that I sort of got this right, that like had chess been invented last week, we would have called it an esport. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Like, who thought of this? Like, how'd you do this, you crazy team of two people? You know, and like, you know, we would have, we would have, we would have thought it was a big deal. And so a lot of these traditional games, and by the way, there's a huge chess, split. like I'm two. Yeah, I'm waiting for Bridge to have its breakout moment, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. Bridge is a great Me game. Too. Like, Me too. I love it. There's there's a lot of really great games out there that get rediscovered with the audience power of these streaming platforms, right? And poker, if you guys have not played poker, it's a really great game. You know, I defy you to go watch Matt Damon and Rounders and then not get, like, super excited to go shuffle up some cards and, you know, deal, like, flip the river, you know, or whatever, you know? But, um... But like, yeah, there there are some factors around poker that I think make it a little harder than some of these other games, um, because poker is, you know, it it's fundamentally tied a lot to 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 wagering, right? And traditionally, we haven't seen esports come into the space that you know basically like to to have the maximum amount of skill component involved require money and wagering. And you can play poker with just chips and everything, but fundamentally, even if you're just playing with chips, it's like. It's a bit like this is a new frontier for us, you know, in the industry because poker is a great game. Um, at the same time, I think another challenge with poker is there's a lot of legacy. There's already lots of great places where you can go to, like, watch poker. I mean, we've talked about it on this podcast, you know, that there's, you know, very successful poker media companies that have been built. So it's also like, unlike chess, which I don't really think had a good consumer platform until Twitch came into being, poker already has ways of reaching out to its fans, right? And so I don't think there's this vacuum that creates such an immediate light bulb moment, you know, like it's crazy how quickly the best chess players in the world got on Twitch because they weren't really anywhere else before. Right. So as soon as they were, and it's a little bit unfair, but generally speaking, like they didn't have a platform that let them reach and build brand in as powerful a way as these live streaming companies. So as soon as one person did it. Everybody was like, well, why don't I do this? This is great. And so it remains to be seen what happens. But I, I do believe there's ton, there's going to be tons of classic games that come into the industry. I think they will always feel a bit different because they won't have been designed with the digital nature of the medium, like fully embraced. Right. So I, I, I think that they'll always feel a little bit analog, but that's also not necessarily a bad thing. There's a beautiful tactility to these traditional games and a simplicity to them that I think could be very appealing. It could also help esports skew older in demographics, right? Like if this gets 55 plus watching Twitch, I'm all for it. So, you know, 
let's let's see what happens. But I'm I'm a believer. I would buy it if you told me poker was blowing up on Twitch. I'd suggest it. And I also wouldn't be surprised to see hearts, bridge, you know, you name it. Right. I, I like I like part of this thesis, which is like poker. You know, poker already had a scene. Hmm. Poker already had an outlet. Right. There's yeah. lots of poker on TV. A lot of that poker. you can go watch. You know, World Poker Tour has a zillion shows. There's lots of poker on YouTube. There's, you know, there's lots of poker to watch if you really want to watch it. Mm. Um, and and the theory here that chess didn't have that, which is why its rise as an esport was me- meteoric. Um, I sort of buy. I could argue the flip side though, William, which is like because poker has the media experience, right? Mm. Already has already had its time in the sun, you know, with World Poker Tour on TV when, it, you know, 10 years ago or 15 yep. years ago when it was the hottest thing around. Fun to watch. Like, it's fun to watch. They should, and if, it, you could argue that if anything, they should be ahead of the curve, right? Like they have the, they understand how to produce big events. They understand how to build audience. They understand maybe even the digital component. Like, couldn't you argue that poker having experienced tremendous media growth and audience growth already in a way that chess never did, they should be better positioned to become an esport and see uh, like the same kind of meteoric rise. Could you not argue the exact flip yeah. side? Yeah, you could. You absolutely could, Paul. You absolutely could. Um, I just, you know, I, I tend to think that, you know, we're, how to say this nicely, like humans, like we tend to notice degree changes much more than absolute changes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and air rushes to fill a vacuum. And so those two things really make chess, those two factors really play for chess and make the growth in chess on Twitch and live streaming and in the esports world feel much more meteoric, right? Like, it's just, it, it's like, it, it's interesting, you know, but like you, like you said, like we, we already had exposure to poker. So even if poker were really blowing up on live streaming platforms, there's already other places for poker. It wouldn't feel like such a degree of difference. And I think part of the success story of chess, like I said, is it was just so at like, I wasn't watching chess. Like, I mean, maybe you were because you're cooler than I was, but it wasn't like I was sitting down three years ago and like watching chess or reading a chess book or laughing at a silly <laughs> opening move, you know? And now I'm like, oh yeah, let's go. Come on. What are you going <laughs> to rook knight e5? Ooh, I wouldn't have done that. Oh wait, that was a great move. I'm an idiot. Oh, okay. You know, like it's just, it, you know, and, and I, I will also say, you know, the skill in chess I think is a little more, and this is, I'm not trying to disparage poker at all, but I think the skill in chess is a little more apparent, right? Like if you think of what- there's less luck involved, no question, right? Less 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 randomness. But think about like, and and again, this is somebody I'm sure will hit me up on social media. I doesn't say this belies, you know, is my ignorance here. But like, think about how, when, when you make a move in chess in your live streaming, think about then how much there is to talk to your audience about while you wait for that other person to make their play, right? You can say like, well, I put the knight here because I wanted to set up a fork here and I also wanted to take pressure off of this piece and this frees the bishop and blah, blah, Like there's a real library of discussion you can have and it's a very concrete series. Like you can say, now this square is threatened, right? Now this piece is free. Like it's very, it's, it's very, you can get a clear mental image of it. If you think of skill in poker, right? A lot of it is like, I have a read. You know what I mean? That guy definitely doesn't have two aces, right? Yep. And I'm not saying there aren't other things. There's, you know, probably some math you can do and odds on and all that stuff, right? But even that is a little bit less transparent. Like, oh, I ran some quick things and I think I'm 43% to get this hand, right? Like, yeah, but how'd you do it? You know, you're not going to break down the math steps. Oh, two dime, two, you know, two to two of hearts showing or you know, two of hearts, two of clubs showing. So, so like, I think the fact that the strategy in chess lends itself to the live streaming format helps it significantly as well agreed i think there's good there, there will be though this interesting um learning that we will take away from this should poker emerge as an as an as an esport and something that is streamed you know commonly um which is what works better right poker where you have randomness luck but you have drama as a consequence right like mm. That where is your fate can turn around by, you know, some stroke of luck, even if your play was bad um, versus chess, which is very methodical. It's, you know, there's no there's no randomness whatsoever. It's you either 
outplay or get outplayed, right? And and therefore potentially has less drama, right? So there's this like there's this interesting conversation around what makes for good esports entertainment, also, right? Well, I I definitely think chess, and this is a controversial statement, but I definitely think chess would be a better game with a little bit of randomness in it, right? Interesting. There's that, no there, there's a debate about how much randomness should be in games, but I think like like let's imagine you and I play chess today, Paul. You're better at chess than me. You'll beat me every time. I don't stand a chance, right? But if we play Valorant together, maybe you walk around a corner and I happen to have my Odin out and you know, like yeah. I can at least get a round off of you. You know what I yeah. mean? I can be like, oh, at least you know. so I, I do think, you know, like there are a lot of I'm not criticizing chess. This is a brilliant game, but I do think it would be an easier game to get into if there was some randomness in it. Right. Um, but I also think that, you know, maybe that, you know, as appealing as that is, if the goal is to be a viewership driven sport and not a player driven sport, maybe we like the fact that the best people are consistently the best. Right. Because yep. maybe it really speaks to the highest level of play wins. The best moves are always rewarded. Right. There's yep. no, you know, like, oh, the person rolled a 10 on their damage roll. Doesn't matter what I do. I have 10 health. What are the odds? You know, <laughs> yep. so.